You two are bad friends. Who are these two idiots? A white dude and an Asian dude. You two are disgusting. Well, you two are something. We're bad friends. A woman, a woman born with two vaginas, had um, gave birth. To wait, wait. <laughs> twins. Will you look that up? Woman born with two vaginas. A woman in Alaska has two vaginas and gave birth. But which which hole did the baby come out of? Not the hole that I had sex. She with. does, Bob. <laughs> what? Let's see this woman. I was lo I was lopsided while pregnant. Woman feared her two vaginas and cervixes and wombs would leave her childless. Gives birth naturally. But is there, I would have taken a, a prop bet on which vagina the baby would come out of. But it, the two vaginas is a um, <laughs> like a Siamese twin that was an underdeveloped, right? I, I oh, is that what that is? If you have two, she was born with two vaginas, two cervixes. So one of them's an underdeveloped Siamese twin. I oh that so the, all so, that's, so all that's left of her, her twin it's is not her, her baby. <laughs> it's her sister's baby. <laughs> She's the aunt. All that's left of her twin is her pussy. Yeah. Like as like her twin is gone, her vagina is the only. Well, you know, how sometimes left. in India, like a kid will be born with two legs and a hand sticking out of their back. <laughs> Dude, when you see that, yeah, it's it'll be like a fist out of their face. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's the craziest shit. Right, I always when I first meet them, I always shake that other hand, <laughs> and I always call it a different name. <laughs> hey, Frank. You shake their fist. Ted, excuse me, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This woman was born. This is what I'm gonna. This is what I want to know. Yeah. When the baby. <laughs> when the baby's coming out it sees two well it doesn't see anything but two vaginas which one does it pick and would that change its life i don't know that i don't know <laughs> come on you, dude you, oh so it's a, the hole you come out of the tube very, of destiny exactly tube of destiny the tubes of destiny the hole you come out of very much dictates your complete future it comp you think so i 100 percent believe why it. why because why would that matter because there's got to be some kind of powerful juice magic when you slide out that dictates almost everything maybe but so there's but okay look at yours there's two rules <laughs> right. came, came out of the wrong hole he tell, definitely came out of the wrong hole he came out of the there was hole. only one choice. <laughs> I don't know what if do you, you mean? This, but he came out of the butthole. You're a butthole baby. <laughs> no. You are 100 percent a butthole baby. Yeah. And the doctors were like, "Yeah, well, this does look like a butthole baby." Yeah. My question is, um, when they remove the limbs, like you know, what I mean, sometimes this is what I hate about white doctors and in, in Western medicine. We don't like white doctors either. I know. But I don't Western want a white medicine. doctor. So in India, right, a kid will be born with like you know an extension of a Siamese twin coming out of their body, right? And there's always like a doctor in America. I'll operate for free. You know what I mean? Yeah. To get the publicity. Pro bono. Yeah, but it's like, is it, what does what does the kid think? Like, what, don't, like take, don't take off Larry. He wants his brother there. I don't know. Someone well, to chat to at well, night. Which, well, especially when it's like a face. When there's a, when there's a face. <laughs> well, what? the face one is weird. Yeah, yeah. These are all these deformities that uh, we shouldn't. It's so sad to even. <laughs> We're not making fun of the I'm person. I'm not making fun of the person. No. It's called Lakshi Tatma. Yeah. What is Lakshi Tatma? Zoom in a little bit there, George. Lakshi Tatma. Oh, that's a human. No, that's not a. Yeah, yeah. What are you the, doing, man? That's Lakshi I, Tatma. They thought she was a god. Remember this? A goddess? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When she had a bunch she, of. She animals. had like nine legs. Yeah. Can I ask you this? <laughs> can you pinch so yeah. I can see her? Yeah. God, I wish fucking we had Carlos yeah, we, here. We need Carlos here. Isn't yeah. this insane that you bring this guy in who's yeah. been a fucking. This guy has been a podcast producer for what, how many years? 10? 12? Yeah. No, let me ask yeah, you something. Yeah, over seven. No, no, no over let, me seven. Make, let me make fun of him for a second. All right. <laughs> seven fucking plus years. And I said, can you pinch and zoom? He can't do that. Do you know we pay him the most of anybody I, we I pay? I know we do. I know we do. It's disgusting. For the next rest of the year, you're switching salaries with yeah, Fancy. He's also a butthole baby, so just let him. <laughs> All right, butthole yeah, baby. He's a butthole baby. So, All right, so here's the deal. This is La Lakshmi. And <laughs> yeah, I have something to say about her, right? Uh, they, go ahead. Here's the thing. Uh -huh. and, and, and I'm going to be very mindful about it, uh -huh. right? And, and right. Make sure you just focus on him for just this shot. Imagine <laughs> the cool job she could have as she gets older. Drummer? She's n n the number one at the sweatshop. <laughs> Lakshi, Lakshi made 15 Nikes in 20 minutes. You know, How? Uh, yeah. Just 38 hands. Right, well, there's another job that she could have. That's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Goalkeeper on a soccer team. Oh, my God. Dude, Nothing's imagine going by her. Dude, you're doing a penalty, a penalty kick, and she's with all her arms. You know yeah. what I mean? You wouldn't know what direction, right? And in two of the arms, <laughs> she's doing taxes. On the other one, she's doing other things. Like <laughs> Honestly, she's like Googling something or watch, you know, with an iPad. I don't know what she's doing, right? But there's just so many things, so do not remove those arms. I think you keep them. Yeah, that's a well, power. Well, this, this says Lakshmi before her 24-hour surgery in 07, so obviously she did get them removed. Yeah, that's, it really angered me when that happened. But didn't they think she was a goddess because they thought she was compared? Because what's the god of with all the- Shiva? Shiva. Shiva, Shiva has, yeah. yeah.
She and, was, but that also would be cool. It's just like I would I would uh, turn to my mom or the surgeon and go, please don't remove it because I just been sitting on an altar eating grapes all day. Right. They've been right? feeding she me could, grapes. That's her job. Now she's just a she's regular a god. girl. She could her whole life just chilling, eating grapes all day, people worshiping her. Picking a grape from here. Yeah. <laughs> this is very mean, but that image reminds me so heavily of the the the, the creature in the Simpsons. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's exactly oh, what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. The go, aliens, yeah. the aliens, the aliens, oh, the aliens. Whoa, dude, <laughs> that's heavy, dude. No, but that's it's heavy, dude. No, no, but whoa, no, whoa, dude. No, no. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just mean. The, are you calling? Are you no. calling Eastern Indians aliens? No, I'm saying the image of the multiple arms doing things <laughs> reminds me of the. There's octopus. other references. She reminds me of calamari. <laughs> Stead is an octopus. That's one and the same. That's easier. We're on the same wavelength. Imagine if calamari looked like her. Would you eat it? Would, no, no one would eat calamari. Do you like calamari? No, I don't even like it. I think it's gross. I think we lie to ourselves and we eat it because we it's supposed to be like a delicacy almost. I think calamari sucks. It's a chewy butthole. It's chewy butthole. Yeah, yeah, I don't want a chewy butthole. First of all, we're back to the old school days, yeah. I should say, because COVID's, COVID's once again got... Doc is sick <laughs> for the fifth time with COVID. Yeah. Oh, man, they got me one time. <laughs> you know what it is? What? It's because Doc does all this NASA science stuff on here and the government's trying to kill him. You know that. That's interesting. The government is trying to kill him. They're That's sick of, interesting. And he would, by the way, who would vouch for that? He would. He'd be like, yeah, man, they're coming after me, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's gone. Rudy he, is gone. He's not vaxxed. He refuses to vote. I don't know if he's vaxxed. My assumption was that he wasn't he's vaxxed. Not. Because the I don't way think he, he is. The way he talked about it was yeah, that. I don't think he is. Yeah. So, so we've got Fancy sitting in the chair to fill in for both uh, Little Black <laughs> How Magic. How did the show go? How did my show go yeah. downtown? Yeah. It was amazing, actually. What ended up happening, well, the night was great. Um, my buddy Chris and I met up, um, had something to eat, and then I went to Theo's show at the Wilter, and he had two shows. Yeah. I went and did 15 or... No, I did 20 minutes before Theo. Yeah. And it was awesome. It was me, Lara Bites, uh, and uh, Frank Castillo. Yeah, I like Frank, yeah. Um, and uh, they did great. I went up, I got a great 20 minutes. I did a, have, a, have a really fun 20 minutes. It was great. Um, gave a hug to Theo, and then we jetted over to the palace, and I had a great time downtown. Amazing! It was amazing to see LA come out for LA, which was hard because I complained the whole time about Netflix. Fucking Netflix, <laughs> a thousand shows in one night. The same night we performed, yeah. Me and Theo down both close to each other. Mm. Fluffy was at the fucking Dodger Stadium. My God. Mulaney was at the Hollywood Bowl. My God. Schumer was supposed to be doing a show, but she canceled because she got COVID. Amy Poehler and Tina Fey were doing a fucking uh, reading, a ta like a table read thing together. Yeah. Jay Fair, it was like 40 fucking comics. So thank I'm thankful for the people that came to my show. There's millions of people that live in LA though. I know, man, but there's but there's not million, they're not all comedy fans. Yeah. So the comedy fans that came, I'm very appreciative of. But you think like the fluffy fans were making it just, hey bro. It was between me hey, and bro, Fluffy. Hey bro, which one you want to go to, bro? Fluffy or? I don't know, dog. I think between... <laughs> Between Santino and Iglesias? Yeah, yeah. Maybe Santino, uh, eh? No, by the way, yeah. I did have mostly Mexicans there because I asked yep. how many Mexicans are there. And they went, no, he knows. Yeah. He was, he saw, how many, Me I mean, dude, it was like 80% Mexican, which made yeah. me so happy. And then there was about 10% Chinese. <laughs> Asians or Chinese? Specifically? We had, I specifically said Chinese. I said, how, where are my Chinese people at? Yeah. And I heard about 30 people. About Korean. Did you throw that I said, out? where are my Korean people at? But they heard that the Chinese were there, so clap. they didn't say a word. I was in the audience. I didn't clap. They were nervous. <laughs> I was like, ah. Uh. Well, because the Chinese were there looking at them like, yeah, don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. don't you dare. Amazing. No, it was really, really fun. And now I'm almost done, so I'm really glad. So that was Saturday. You know what I did Saturday? I did the uh, main room in front of 10 people. <laughs> so that's what I did. Well, why would you do a show on the weekend with the Netflix thing? I just did. Our Netflix show, by the way, at the our Bad Friends, I should say, show, it had nothing to do with Netflix. What do you mean? <laughs> I like they just put their name on it. They put a box. Somebody showed up, put a box on stage, and then left. Put a Netflix box. That's yeah, a, Netflix a, on a it. crew, a guy who builds stuff, put a box together, throw it up, and then went home. Yeah, Netflix had fucking literally nothing to do with it. Um, and I'm here to tell you, cancel what? your Netflix subscription. Why? Just cancel it. <laughs> no, cancel it. I'm pro Netflix, man. Oh, you? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I am. Me too. <laughs> Let's be pro Netflix. Let's be pro Netflix, you guys. <laughs> subscribe subscribe yeah. to Netflix yeah, please they need the help <laughs> it was they, a fun show they, they could use a boost huh it was a fun show our show our show was good it, the problem was I have a bone to pick with you <laughs> with, I mean, uh, can I just say this can I fucking uh, pick let me the just bone say something, pick the bone 
My bones are there to be picked, bud. Raise your arms, <laughs> right? And let me I, I'm roadkill. You're fucking vulture, mm -hmm. right? Pick <laughs> the yeah, right. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, go ahead, vulture. <laughs> but before I do, yeah, right. I've just been having a tough week. Fuck off. Okay, go ahead. Pick. Um, the bone to pick that I've always had with Bobby, and we've talked about this. When we do a show together, or when you do your show, the Bobby Lee and Friends, or when we do Bad Friends. Bobby and I should go at the end, but instead, Bobby goes in the middle of the fucking show in the sweetest of sweet spots. They're here to see us. You get off, and then you bring up two more comics, and then I have to close the show. George is nodding because he knows it's insane. Yeah, but I asked you, don't close it. You can go up anywhere you want. In no, the dude, it's our show. We should close the show. That's it's not the worst show. thing he did. What was the worst thing I did? You told Doc after oh. the show is over. <laughs> oh my god! To go back <laughs> yes. and do thirty minutes. <laughs> you know, he, you know, he, he went out and did time. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah. Doc went out and did like 20, 20 more minutes after every, every, after Which the show is over. Which was perfect because it got us to be able to escape. I know, but the poor <laughs> bastard. He goes out there. Yeah. He's like, oh man, but hey man, bad friends. <laughs> Come on, bear friends, let's stay. And people were getting up and they were like, fuck, dude, should I have to, do I have to stay? You know what? You know how like at the end of a movie after the credit roll, somebody has told you that there might be an extra piece of the movie? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So That's what it was. It was like a Marvel movie <laughs> because when I saw a, a Doctor Strange, we waited to the very end of the credits. And the clip wasn't worth it, was it? <laughs> it was not. That's no. how they felt when no. they saw Doc up there. Especially the Batman one. Did you see yeah. the clip of that one? Yes. It's just a question mark. Stupid. Stupid. So dumb. Yeah, but that's what we did. We put a question mark at the end of <laughs> No, no, no. So we're walking out. You guys all left early since you didn't want to get mobbed. Yeah. We're walking out with Esther, and Doc is just getting in the groove. Yeah. He, and he I'm was, like, he was on fire in his yeah. head. Did he get laughs? No. Were you there? Everybody was confused. Because they were, they were confused. About to leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They sat down again. Yeah. They had no idea what was going on. Yeah. He, I, so, I just, I, I love Doc. A little blood back, man, blood back, man, blah, 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 blah. I love him. He doesn't get it. Well, no, Bob, here's what happened. He just I told Andres, I told Andres, the show is over. You got to get him off stage. Go. So Andres runs up and I'm scared that I'm going to get yelled at by Doc for taking his stage time. That's... Andres comes out, like tells Doc, hey, show, uh, show's over, guys. You can all go home. <laughs> and Doc like comes out. He's like, thank you. Uh, Bobby told me to do another 30 minutes. I was starting. I was about to start a big bit. Sorry, guys. You're free to go. I, I'm sorry I live here with Doc, but you're free to go. <laughs> you were joking he believed you you can't jo he's like a child you can't joke with him i was kidding around why would i think that he should do that <laughs> because he believes that kind of stuff yeah i, I go little yeah, black go ahead, magic has hope show out do as long as you want and i just think that that's a joke you, no in his mind he's, he's like, like you said oh, 30 yeah. minutes don't gotta do 30 bobby told me to do a half hour yeah yeah but uh, can i just say this though <laughs> he did great by the he way he did great but i, I want to say this though he did five minutes, right, to open the show, right? Yeah. 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 I paid him 400 bucks to do the show, right? <laughs> okay. Do the 30 minutes. <laughs> you want your money's worth? Is I, I, I kind of do. All you right. know what I mean? I understand. Five minutes for $400 is crazy. It's a little much. It's a little much. It's a little much. Yeah. So, um, But also, he we need we need to get him off of Amazon. His contract is up. His contract's up. Also, did you also see this? So at, when we did the question and answers at the end of the that show, right? A girl comes up to the thing, and she obviously is hitting on Doc. Yeah, right. She's just like, so you're saying you have. A, so what kind of girls do you like? I mean, and she's kind of going, look at me. Right? Yeah, look at my body. See yeah. if this is what you like. Oh, uh, uh, you, I don't know what. Uh, what was the response? He's like, I don't got no type. I, yeah, yeah. I don't got no type. But that was a clear. <laughs> do you want to fuck me? Do you want to fuck? <laughs> yeah. Right, and he did not read it. No, because he doesn't want to fuck. I'm not focusing on these holes. Can I just? Uh, no, can I say a theory? Go ahead. And he can defend himself when, next time he's here. <laughs> or right? not. You know, I just think that... Let me just throw this out there. Right? You, you know, <laughs> you know um, do you think that, you know, if a bunch of your uncles were slaughtered <laughs> because they were gay, you know, from the gay side, right? Awful. Do you think that's a terrible thing? And I am so very traumatized by it all. Yeah. You know, I think about it all the time. I you do. So you think about, about it daily. You text me about I do, it I do. Day. And... Um, is that hereditary? It is. There, there is partial scientific evidence to prove that it might be hereditary. But in my opinion, I would think if enough people in your family were gay, you'd feel left out. 
Right. You think it's peer pressure. You think it's conditioned. I think you might start sucking just to fit in. Yeah, right. I mean, look, you go to Thanksgiving and all your uncles are like, and then we went to the manhole and we were <laughs> yeah, fucking Which is a sucking. great club I in love Michigan. the manhole. The manhole is amazing. And so they're bragging about it and you're sitting there with your green beans and you don't know how to, you know. Oh, oh green beans. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean green beans? What do you mean green beans? No, I'm saying you're at Thanksgiving dinner. What do you mean by it though? Thanksgiving dinner. I said you're sitting there oh, with your green. I didn't, I didn't hear the Thanksgiving part. <laughs> oh, I see. You're at a holiday dinner and you're fucking. Uh, everyone's bragging about dick, and you might want to throw your hat in the ring, right? Or toss your cock ring in the butthole. You might want to have a little bit of validity to and go. You know, I'm. I'll suck. I suck a dick too. You know, you right. want to feel like you fit in. Mm. Family gatherings are tough as that as it is because when the girl was obviously hitting on him on the show. He had no interest. Yeah. She he, was actually very cute. Yeah. He was eyeing some other dude in the audience. Right behind her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Uh, yeah. He's like, let my, my type behind you. <laughs> what is this? There is no gay gene. There is no straight gene. Okay. Okay. So, so then it's true and not true at the exact same time. Right. Human sexual orientation has a heritable component. Ah, there's a component that you can inherit. Yeah, and we're not like, you know, I think it's a great thing. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm just like, here's what I don't like. Because of like, we know a lot of comics that aren't out. Sure, yes, correct. Right? And yeah. there's like, there's we suspect. Yeah. I mean, right? well, we know. But, but yeah, we know, but we can't, there's no it's not scientific our, it's proof. Not, it's not it's, of our business. It's not our business to tell. Right. But the whole idea that they can't say it because it's a sort of social. Oh, the business. Yeah, and the business is very it's it, it's it's not a good thing. I well, hate that. Well, because the business, if you're gay, the business says you got to be fucking gay. Right. You, you can't like suck dick and throw a football. They don't like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You one or the other to them. If they, that's why the business is full of shit. They're like, we want diversity. No, they don't. They want their version. They want a gay guy that's like, yes, queen. <laughs> they don't want. Mm. They don't want a guy who's like, I just like to fucking fuck dudes because I'm gay, but I'm yeah. also, I don't always have to. We don't all have to sound like that. Yeah, it's like if um. Have you ever seen the show um, uh, uh, the other? Oh my god, the other two, or I mean, yeah, the other two. It's all aw it's fucking awesome. Molly Shannon plays his mom. Yeah, it's such a good show. If you haven't seen the show, go watch it. It's on HBO. Drew plays a struggling actor, and him and his sister H Helena York, I think, is her name, and their younger their younger brother, this kid Case Walker, is like a huge star, a huge star, and yeah, they're yeah. and they're in the background. But That's Drew plays. Very much a young gay man who's trying to maneuver through Hollywood and, you know, not get lost in just his sexuality, where he doesn't want them to just just promote him as just a gay actor. Right. It's very true to form. It's wonderful. I think it's wonderfully written. It's beautifully done. It's. I think Sarah Schaefer wrote. I think uh, the writer, two writers from SNL, the head writers from SNL, wrote it. I think Sarah Schaefer maybe is the writers of it. Look who wrote it there. What does it say? Writers. Um, oh yeah, Chris Kelly and Sarah Schaefer, right, from SNL. And it's just cleverly done in a way that's like, this is what the industry does. They take somebody, and if you're gay, they're like, you gotta gay it up a little bit. You're right. And he on the show is like, I can't. why can't I just read it as me? And they're like, could you be a little bit more gay? And he plays with that world on <laughs> because the show. Mo because most gay people that I know aren't flamboyant in that way. Well, it, I mean, there's some that are, uh, yeah, but it's just like. Who cares though? And at the same time. No, I don't care. It's just like, it's not the stereotype that's on TV is so fucking fake. Yeah. That every gay person mm. or every gay man is a yas queen. Yeah. Not every guy's like that. Just like not every guy's a big bad bully bro. Hey, fucking uh, fuck chicks. There's a lot of guys like you that are very what? sensitive. What? <laughs> Soft. What do you mean? Well, you're not a guy's guy. <laughs> I'm still a guy guy. You're not a guy's guy. I got guy all the time. You're not a guy's guy. <laughs> I I'm a, I shave I don't shave, shave what hair? You don't have hair to shave on your face. I know, but I'm growing it out like a man. You put that beard. <laughs> yeah, it just takes a while. You put people. that mustache on 15 years ago, and then never, 43 years ago, that yeah. was pr yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Little prickly. No, you're not a guy's guy. But could, uh, let's get to, uh, because I feel like that I am. But let's let's talk about that for a second because I need to explore this. You're not. Raise your hand if you think Bobby's a guy's guy. <laughs> One for four. Guy, guy. <laughs> One for four. What? One for four. One for four. Yeah, but these guys have resentments toward me and they have something against me. These guys them. are in love with you. Okay. So let's prove that I'm a guy, guy. Okay. okay? What do guy guys do that I don't do? Sports. I any... love sports. You can't play any <laughs> I love ping pong. Not a sport. <laughs> okay. I love um, soccer. 
I know, but you don't play it. Really? Do you play football? Sure. I've I've kicked a ball around. That's not what football is. <laughs> no, soccer, though. American football? All right. Okay, so... Real football. I do like sports. I like MMA a lot. Okay. I watch it all the time. So that makes me a guy. No, no. That doesn't make you a guy. <laughs> right. Women, women like MMA, too. Making you a guy's guy means you're a kind of guy that men feel a, a masculine vibe from and they want to hang out with. But do you think you're reading my size? And that also goes into it. Right. Most little men so are like guys Doc, guy. So like Doc Doc, is Doc Doc a guy's guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Doc Doc, Black Magic is a guy's guy. I'm not. This is no, fucking no, no. offensive. No, no, no. Doc is a guy's pal, not a guy's guy. Right. And my guy's pal, pal. You're a guy's pal. All right. So he's not a guy's guy. <laughs> he's not a guy guy. <laughs> right. You're a guy pal. Right. So we're both guys pals. Right. You are. Is Andreas a guy's guy? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. He's a guy's pal. George is actually a guy's guy. George is a guy's guy. He is. Why? Because he raises chickens? Well, uh, yes. He's very, he's very like, um, like George can camp. He can set up a tent. Like George has manly skills that make him a guy's guy. Just because uh, he's not, you don't have to be into sports to be a guy. George, and George does like sports, but George has guy guy things. He can do masculine, manly bullshit like things. Like the other day, I bought this, um, <laughs> I, I, I think I know what you're saying. So yeah. I, I went, when I was in Oklahoma, I bought this. Time out real fast. You're a guy's guy, you're a guy's pal. He's a guy's pal. Fancy's a guy's gal. <laughs> oh, you're a guy's gal. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. <laughs> now you understand. I understand now. I'm, it's very clear to me. <laughs> guys, guys. You definitely are the guy's guy pal. Gal pal. Yeah. Guy gal. Guy gal. I mean, look at how he's sitting. Gal. That's a yeah. guy. Ga that's a guy's gal. Yeah. Guy gal. Yeah, the or, way he sits. Or you said it. That's a gal pal. Gal pal. He's yeah. fancy as a gal pal. Yeah, gal pal. Me undies. You know, I, I wear underwear like you. <laughs> yeah. Right. And the only underwear I wear is me undies because they're the most comfortable. They have the best um, patterns and designs. Mm -hmm. The material they use is better than all the underwears I've used. You know those days when your coffee shop is out of cold brew and your air conditioner breaks and you try to go to the beach, but there's zero parking spots? Mm -hmm. Yeah, life can be hard, right, it Andrew? Can. It can. Good, good thing Me Undies is here to help you take a break from the hardships, hardships of the world and give yourself a soft summer. Yeah, I want a soft summer because I can tell you summer can be sweaty. But your butt doesn't have to be. You can keep that tushy dry with MeUndies light and breathable micromodal fabric. You can stay comfy all summer long and cool. They have super fun seasonal prints and tons of styles to choose from, from extra small, me, to 4XL, Bobby. So you can bring the beach to your butt without leaving your living room. And I got to tell you, we've been wearing MeUndies and talking about them for years prior to even us uh, getting a sponsor from them on this show. Yeah. And I love MeUndies, and here's why. When I wash them, they're just as comfortable. Sometimes you wash underwear and it gets frayed and gets hard and it feels like a towel after you have a beach towel. Oh. MeUndies stays soft. So my pepito and my tushy like how smooth it is. Mm -hmm. What do you love about MeUndies, Bob? I love it because um, it's, it's something about the flexibility of the fabric. Like, you know, I used to go and perform and be and dance around in my underwear, mm -hmm. MeUndies underwear, right? Yep. And it's the best underwear to just do active things. So you like to do act outs. If you guys like act outs, you can wear <laughs> MeUndies, <laughs> MeUndies underwear. MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners. For the first time purchasers, you get 15% off if you sign up for their free to join membership. You can apply to get that 15% off their already discounted membership prices. To get 15% off your first order and 100% satisfaction guaranteed, go to MeUndies.com slash fancy. fancy. That's MeUndies.com slash fancy. fancy. DoorDash. Oh my God. What so, do you use every time you leave? What app is on your phone for food? DoorDash. And I'm going to I, I want to prove to people. I'm prove gonna, it. I'm going to prove to you. Number one, I have a DoorDash app right here, right? And I go to orders, right? And if I go to orders here on my DoorDash app, right? Le yesterday, May 10th, I got Casita del Campo. Oh, I love Casita del Campo. Saturday, April 30th, I got Boa Steakhouse. I get all everything from Bo, uh, from um, DoorDash. It's my favorite. It's amazing because DoorDash connects you with the restaurants you love right now and right to your door. Uh, skip, you know, those grocery store essentials, you can get those with DoorDash. You can get drinks and snacks and household items delivered in under one hour. Dinner? Yeah, I love Check. dinner. Dinner. Deodorant? Check. Check. Morning pick-me-up from Dunkin' Donuts? Check. Check. Get everything you need whenever you need it with DoorDash. DoorDash is incredible. I got over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia. Support your neighborhood go-tos. Or pick from your favorite national chains. And let me tell you, Bob and I have promoted this stuff because we both use DoorDash. I like it. It's efficient. They haven't messed up. And that's why I keep using them no matter where I go or what kind of food I want to eat. For a limited time, guys, our listeners get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code BADFRIENDS. 
2022. That's 25% off up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store. Enter the code BADFRIENDS2022. Don't forget that's code BADFRIENDS2022 for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. So when I was in Oklahoma, I bought a, a thing. I went to this um, Native American exposition and I bought like a thing where you put on the wall and you, and you put your keys on it, right? And some guy had a- A dream catcher. <laughs> I think I explained it wrong. Do you put keys on there that you wish of cars that you had? On? <laughs> and no. there, there, in the back of it, there's no like way of like, there's no hook or anything, right? So I just put it against the wall and just slides off. I, I, I don't know how to do it, right? Right. So I looked at George and I go, hey, can you do this for me? Mm -hmm. And the other day he brought screws and a, and a little thing and he started doing it. Guy's right guy. Yeah. He never hung it up yet. Um, I didn't want to get in trouble uh, doing something to your wall. So I was hoping you would uh, put a few nails into the oh, wall. Oh, you want me to? Oh, oh, yeah. I can do that. By the way, a conscious guy's guy. <laughs> yeah, a conscious guy's guy. He doesn't want to fuck shit up. He can help you, but he doesn't want to ruin it. I'll put a hole right in your wall and not think about it. <laughs> okay. That's a guy's guy. I'm a Neanderthal guy's guy. <laughs> oh, I'm not, he's advanced. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, oh. That's, right. I want to break it and I'll fix it later. All right. So then, you know what? I, I think now I'm leaning more toward, you know what I mean? A guy's pal. You're a guy's pal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Guy's guys, guy's pal, guy's gal. Yeah. Or a gal pal. Now, having sex, right? Does that affect the way you make love? Absolutely. So do you do this? Like I lock eyes. You don't lock eyes? Um, I always, well, I don't, I, what do I do? Well, no, no, I can't look into your eyes. <laughs> All right. I, I'm an eye locker. You just eye lock. Yeah. It's creepy. <laughs> right. I'm closed eyes most of the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Like when I'm eating her out, I, I, we lock, I have, look at me. How does she, you look, how, she looks, she's staring right down <laughs> yeah. at you. And she's always going. No, no, no. Stop, stop, stop. But, but guys, guys, pals like you are more, are more sensitive lovemakers. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We I do thigh work. Uh, me and you do thigh work. George and I are ground and pound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I do thigh work. I do finger four leg lock, and I've got you. <laughs> right. And rear I'm naked choke. Rear Kimura. naked choke. Kimura. I'm drill. Right. I'm just. <laughs> I'm drilling. Yeah, you're dr <laughs> right. You're painting, and maybe you'll find like an iron ore or something. And sometimes you do get something good down. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. You are painting strokes, smooth, swift. smooth, and soft, and yeah. yeah, yeah. George and I are jackhammer. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But can I just say and this? And Andreas, when he has sex, yeah. he, he sings. <laughs> Ah, you sing. Yeah. He just sings in Spanish when he makes love. Or a little creepier, he does what the Riddler does and he sings Ave Maria. <laughs> Ave Maria. <laughs> and they're just like, and you wear that little green mask that you got at the army surplus store. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not to, by the way, not to step on toes or infringe on people's privacy, but I got to tell you, yeah. Fancy's wife came along this weekend to say hi. <laughs> And I want to say this: mm. she is fucking beautiful. She is beautiful. She, you have a stunningly stunning. beautiful wife. Yeah, it is really. It's I, and she's sweet and she's smart and she's cool and she's successful. And I, I keep going. <laughs> why does she fuck fancy? And I, I know that's a cheap joke, but honestly, after this morning, right now, of course she wants to fuck a gal pal. <laughs> yeah, she wants a fucking guy's gal. Yeah. She wants a gal pal because he's sensitive, he's sweet, he's loving, he's caring, he's hardworking, he's intelligent. Yeah, she wants a guy's pal. She wants a guy's she pal. She wants a guy's pal, you want a gal's pal. No, no, no. She <laughs> Is that what it is? You're a guy's pal. I'm a guy's pal. She would never fuck you. I She wants a guy's gal. I get it. Which is fancy. I understand. A I gal understand. pal. I understand. Can I just say something too? I think I saw a clip that really I had to turn it off because it kind of it put a chill down my spine. Hmm. And it made me shiver. Right in a wrong in the bad way in a bad way negative shiver in a negative shiver <laughs> and what it was and I think I saw it correctly I'm not sure it was at your show were you in the audience yeah 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 was there any point where you stood up faced the audience and did a wave and got a, like a, a cheer yes yeah that was the grossest thing <laughs> are you I mad at ever... me no he not did, you he did I, it. I know it was literally the grossest <laughs> he, thing he invited I, me stop up. stop. Stop. All right. Let him have. Let, yeah, let me have it. Okay. Let him have it. It's the grossest thing I had ever witnessed in a live show <laughs> in my life, buddy. It's not a bad friends event. <laughs> it's his own show. Number two, right? You're just soaking up love, and it makes me so sad for you. <laughs> right now, how did that feel? Defend yourself, fans. 
I was recording the event. He was. He was working the event. Mm. And I was actually behind the curtains. Well, you know, and then Andrew said, "Hey, come here, fancy." So never I just like that. poke my. Head. I don't. I don't. Ne- think I never that. said. I don't think you did that. Why would you proof. do that on your own? Show? I, went, I went like this. I went like this. Fancy, go back. Go back. <laughs> yeah, and, he, yeah. and he goes, "Come on the stage." <laughs> And I said, Fancy, go back, but back away. Yeah, yeah. He oh, goes, my bad. I'll come on on the stage. <laughs> yeah. Also, come here, look, everybody give it up for Fancy B. The Fancy B came along. Oh my God. Get off my stage. <laughs> it's insane. They love Fancy so much. That was That's all him. what I felt. That was yeah. him. Yeah. Um, because you know what? The power of this show and the fame of the, the success of this show, yeah. which we're very appreciative of for the fans, mm. it's gone to some of these guys' heads. It, I... I would, didn't want to say it out loud, but I believe that's true. I'll say it. Yeah, it's definitely gone to Fancy's head. Carlos, now, I mean, he he's gotten a little out of control because he's on a couple, right? He does this sometimes, but he does Trash, Trash Tuesdays Tuesday. a lot, oh, right? Yeah. So he's soaking in a lot of like little side fame. You, you know, here's how I can. That's his vibe, it. dude. Let, let's look at Clark Kent. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if Superman can somehow touch his friends and give them a little bit of his power, oh yeah, right. Because he doesn't show off to fly. He only does it when there's an emergency. Oh, the sky, a skyscraper's falling. I got to fly up, right? Have to save it. But these guys, let's say these guys were Superman's friends. Mm-hmm. They would be all day long just kind of going 100 feet <laughs> off the ground, just on the street, and just telling people, like, look what I got. Yeah, that's what it is. You know what I mean? Look what I can do. They could put a little laser out of their eye, right, and burn like. They, they, yeah. you know, I could see this. They're bringing all the neighborhood people out, right, and putting a fucking, like, aluminum can on, like, a. you know what I mean? Uh, you're right, and, and, and doing it, and, do, and people going, "Yay!" Right, and the that's what they're doing. Yeah, it just yeah. pops a little bit. It's so fucking sad. But can I tell you something? What? Who's Superman in this whole thing? Because he's really to blame. You. It's you. <laughs> what? You're Superman. Thank you. You're Superman. I Superman. Yes. Yeah. You are. I'm that guy. I'm Harvey Dent. <laughs> oh, you're no. I, I don't believe that. I know, super, I, know that's, oh, I know that's a different movie, but yeah, it's a t- completely different <laughs> movie. Yeah, that's that's why I didn't equate. I just meant one side of my face is nicer than the other. Yeah, you think there's a do? Du- no, you know what I can say? You are like Harvey Dent. I think there's a duality. Yeah, and obviously there, you're a very sweet guy, but then you sometimes scream. Yeah, sometimes I lose it. You lose it, and I, you know, that's the Harvey Dent side. I have very, I'm very Dent esque qualities. I mean, that's the, uh, you know, I what's, don't. What's the name of that actor? Aaron. Eckhart. Eckhart. Aaron Eckhart. Man, I fucking love that guy. He's a great actor. Thank you for smoking. Yeah, oh, that was that, amazing right? Amazing mm-hmm. movie. God, Aaron Brockovich. This guy made a million fucking hits. He by was the way, great. In Look Aaron. at how many hits he's made. London has fallen. Yeah, he did one that was really bad. I Frankenstein. <laughs> did he do that? Yeah. Oh wow, that is a bad. Fucking well, terrible. At least he gets the chance to do big fucking bad movies. Yeah. I want to do a big bad movie. I want to be in a huge failure. <laughs> I want to be in a huge fucking failure. You do? I think there's something beautiful about that. Yeah, but the, it's, you stop getting into those situations. You get a bunch before that, and then you do one big bad one, and then they don't talk to you for a long time, which I think is kind of a beautiful thing. Yeah, who's another? Who's somebody that had that going? Like, like a ton of shit went right, and then one thing went wrong? Yeah, but the thing that went wrong Look at was Kim really Basing, wrong. Look at Kim Basinger's career. Kim Basinger was supposed to be the next greatest actress. Yeah. I have a. I have a. And there, what, what movie did she do that? Well, let's see. I'm just going to find out because she fell deep down the rabbit hole. I, I know somebody that kind of like had to shift was uh, Halle Berry, Catwoman. Oh, that was bad for her. That yeah, was that was terrible. bad for her. But she. But she's so cool and she beautiful. Shifted. And now she's in Moonfall. <laughs> 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 yeah, she's in Moonfall. That's good. Is it better to burn out or to fade away? Oh, wow. Is it? E- I don't think the same thing. No, what the fuck? Do wait, you wait, not... burn out and fade away. They're both bad. Do you not know this song? No, no. Yeah, it's better to so burn don't... out or than fade to fade away. away. My, my, Ave Maria. <laughs> there it is. Right, so... What... Who knows this song? Do you not yeah. know what I'm saying? but I want to know the difference Who? between... Neil burn... Young. Neil Young. I want to know the difference between... I'm so sorry. Burning out and fading away. Burning out. I'll give you... Okay, I'll give you a fading away. Fading away is what? Would be... Go ahead, Andres. You want to make an analogy of an actor? <laughs> Who's an actor that's faded away? Like Kim ba- Basinger. Kim Basinger basically faded mm, away. Yeah. Mm. Who's an actor that burnt out? Fancy. Mm, 
Will Smith. <laughs> no. No. I'd go Robert De Niro faded away because he stopped doing like real roles. Yeah. That's true. That is very fucked. That is so sad and so true because he started doing bad shit. Like lame shit. Because he didn't want to have to act anymore. Right. He, he wanted tired. to do like fucking the, the Fokker. Not the Fokkers. Uh, yeah. Rocky yeah. Bullwinkle. Uh, that, when he did that, I was like, what the fuck is going he on? He faded away. Now who burnt out? But can I just. Johnny def- Depp. Johnny Depp burnt the fuck out. He f- went out in fl- He's going out in flames. I don't think so. I think he, there's going to be a. He'll never come back from this. Those people, both of them are like, are going to be fucking. I disagree. I'll bet you my bank account. Neither of them will work again. What is work again? It, okay, now that, that, they that's, won't that's, be movie stars ever again. So what you're saying to me is, that I'm not going to be, I'm not going to sit in a theater. You're not going to see Johnny like, Depp in a blockbuster film. You'll see him in indie, indie movies, maybe. Yeah, yeah. It's that's like okay, it's though. like James Franco. Franco's never going to work again, but he'll work. Do you know what I mean? They're well, never going to make him a movie star again, right? Be- because of all that shit. But he is going to do. Sh- he'll, he'll work, mm. but he'll never be a he'll never be in blockbusters like he used to be. Mm. No, unless. He does an indie movie that becomes a blockbuster. Right. I know, but I think and that, I love when that happens. But that'll only happen if. But the industry, the indie market, is so fickle that I think they wouldn't let it go through. Do you it's know like what I mean? Nicolas Cage, you know, that's someone who Nicolas Cage. But he's trying to come back. Now he is coming the, back through the that movie helped round. him. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that movie helped him. It's not just that he did Mandy. He did a bunch of like um, smaller, really films. smaller movies that were really good. Mm-hmm. Mandy was so good, right? So I think that he is coming back. He's, he's trying, but he but he has a chance to because he hasn't done anything fucking egregious. Right. These other guys are getting clipped, so they're doing fucked up shit, and then they're like, "Well, we can't let you back." Mm. That's what happens. Like they, you burning out. I th- I think it's better to fade away than to burn out. I think burnout <laughs> always looks bad. Yeah. The, Neil Young was saying you should burn out. He says it's better to burn out than to fade away. I don't know if that's true. What would you want? I want to fade away. Yeah. I want to say goodbye and good night. But either way, though, what does it mean? It's like if I burned out, right? Let's suppose I burned out and I burned out with money. <laughs> like, you know who's burnt out? Who? But and, but it's it's more tragic. Like Britney Spears burned out. You know what I mean? It's like sad and it's weird now. And now it's like, oh, you know who's about to burn out? Hmm. I sent you that article. Fucking Madonna. If she keeps whatever up she's doing, she's about to burn out. She's gotten weirder and weird. Fucking like parting with Drake and Julia Fox. You're like, what are you, what? what? Yeah. Madonna reveals fully nude NFTs and a shocking 3D model of her vagina. Yeah, like, that's weird. She's it's getting, just, it's going just in a getting weird in a weird zone. Yeah. But she's been a star for so many decades. That's, that's the that's problem not normal. So you got to slowly fade away. You don't need this anymore. You don't need the money. You don't need the attention. That's fucking hot as shit. That's hot as shit. <laughs> Look at that. Life as a woman is like that of a tree. Oh, see, it's growing Starting out of the pussy. I was right. You're right. <laughs> My bad. Always pushing against the resistance of the earth, so that I won't This break. is beautiful. This video, by the way. This is so silly. She's burning out here, baby. She's always pushed the boundaries. And scrape my bark. Saw off my branches. Chop me down. Burn me to the ground. <laughs> they will never. Destroy my essence. Nor take my glory. Nor extinguish my soul. Whoa. Can you go... Whoa, Whoa, that's that's a dope loop. Pause to the vagina part. That It's blurry. They blurred it on purpose. Oh, they did? Did you see that loop? How incredible that was? It went back to a flower that turned into a vagina again? I'm buying it. Yeah. (laughs) Scroll down. I'm going to buy this NFT. I want to buy it. (laughs) It's actually a beautiful poem that she wrote to go along with it. Yeah. My issue inherently is... Oh, it's with Beeple. Who? Beeple. Who the, the fuck biggest, is... Uh, he's the, the biggest uh, NFT guy. Or like he started as a digital artist that was huge and then jumped well, in. Well, that video is incredible. I'm going to give her a lot time. of props. That was fucking incredible awesome. Video. I just think sometimes she's... Oh, now butterflies come out of her puss too? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, this is what happens. If you have a double vagina, a kid comes out of one, a tree grows out of the other one. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you met a girl and she spread her legs and butterflies came out, what would you do? I'd save some of them. <laughs> I know, but would you... Would I continue, continue on? I don't know. What <laughs> could, do, can butterflies hurt your penis? I can't I imagine. So. They, they, they would seem, nibble. Do they have teeth? They. Oh, you're right. I don't, I don't know. think they do. I, I don't think they do. Do butterflies have teeth? I don't. I don't think they do. Yeah. But I think they would just flutter on your penis. Maybe it'd add to the vibration. Maybe. Inside or, or, of, or one would just land on the tip. Right. Just one on the tip. <laughs> just one on the tip. Butterflies don't have teeth. They do have probisks 
A proboscis is basically an elongated snout that's straightened by hydrostatic pressure, allowing them to drink the nectar from the tube like flowers. They could drink out of the tip of your penis, Bob. <laughs> right. They would so, die instantly. So <laughs> they would die instantly. Yeah, and they, yeah, and they yeah, shrivel yeah. up. I think it'd be harmless. There's a fucking meme or there's a there's a <clears throat> trend on the internet going around about young people on on TikTok and stuff that didn't know that Madonna's Like a Prayer was about a blowjob. It was? <laughs> Are you fucking joking? No. Wait. Look at the lyrics for Like a Prayer. What do you mean? Just look up lyrics for Like a Prayer. What? Do you, what? I thought it was about Jesus and praying. Well, sex and God and all these things are kind of intertwined. The poem she just did with that tree. Zoom in and look at this. When you call my name, it's like a little prayer. I'm down on my knees. I want to take you there. In the midnight hour, I can feel your power. Yeah, that's God. <laughs> what? Yeah, you're getting on your knees. You're in church, right? At the middle of the night, that's when God comes to you. When... God comes, for sure. <laughs> no, well, God comes to you at, at night, and, and he comes, and let's read the lyrics. I close my eyes. That's how I pray. Oh, my God, I'm thinking I'm falling. That's how I, I feel. Like, that's how I feel when I'm coming. I feel like I'm falling off. No, the I feel like my life is falling apart, and I'm falling. Well, this right? is a personal thing right now for you. <laughs> right. So, um, out when, of the sky, when you call my name is like a little prayer. I'm down on my knees. I want to take you there. Where would you want to take God to? I'm down on my knees. I want to take you there. T take you there to my pain. No. <laughs> but see, it, you're reading between the lines here, baby. That's what music is, bitch. Don't music is all about missing. Is about interpret. You whisper softly to me. That's how God. God doesn't yell. Yes. Hey, he cut it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's like cut it out. No, no, no. God's a yeller. <laughs> oh, you, oh, the. <laughs> You're in control. You're, right, in, right. you're in control just like a child. Now I'm dancing. It's like a dream. No end, no beginning. You're here with me. It's like a dream. Let the choir sing. You call my name. It's like a prayer. I'm down on my knees. Come yeah. on, man. The midnight know. hour, I can feel your power. This is about giving head. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I don't read really it that way. Or getting about head. Jesus. Or getting head. It could be her getting head. Okay. How about Papa Don't Preach then? Oh, it's about fucking her dad. <laughs> <laughs> Buffy! The greatest thing that you've ever done for me, Andrew, of is all you... time, is doing the show with you. I know. That's and but the second greatest thing is you got me a Buffy comforter. I did. And to, right now, that that Buffy comforter is on my main master bedroom. And here's why I like Buffy comforters. Why? Genuinely. Okay. It's about to be hot. It's starting to get hot in LA. Bingo. And Buffy comforters don't get you sweaty. Okay, they stay super soft it's and super cool. It's future technology. It's like cool. Like last night, it was hot. Yeah, and the Buffy comforter was cool. It's so cool. You know how sometimes you have to flip your pillow right mm -hmm. to get the cool side. Mm -hmm. The Buffy comforter is always cool. It's always cool, baby. You don't have to flip it. It's softer than cotton. It's naturally soothes your skin. It's sustainable. Eucalyptus uses ten times less water than cotton to grow, and its fiber is produced by recyclable, earth-friendly solvents. It's hypoallergenic, just like Bobby, which means you won't sneeze. Uh, plus, its high thread count shuts out dust mold might for a healthier sleeping environment it's machine washable man thanks to an, an innovative stitching pattern that keeps it fluffy fill in place it keeps it fluffy the inside fill of each comforter is made from 100 percent recycled bottles that are transformed and given a second life as a super fluffy fiber it feels even softer than down while keeping approximately 50 bottles out of landfills and ocean for 20 dollars off your buffy comforter visit buffy.co and enter bad friends you can try a comforter in your own bed for free. If you don't love it, return it at zero cost. For $20 off your Buffy comforter, visit Buffy.co, like I said, and enter bad friends. That's right. For $20 off your Buffy comforter, visit Buffy.co and enter the code bad friends. Papa, Papa, I know you're going to be upset. All right. There you go. Because <laughs> I was always your little girl, but you should know by now, I'm not a baby. Oh, she's saying I have hair down there. Is that what she's saying? <laughs> she's hitting on her dad. Right. Dad, yep. I have hair down there. You always taught me right from wrong. I need your help. Please be strong. I may be young at heart, but you know what I'm saying. What are uh, you saying? What are you saying, daughter? All of all of her stuff is sexualized. Well, like I'm the dad. And say that to me the way the lyrics are, and I'm the dad. <laughs> you want right. me to sing them to you? Yeah, it's like I, I'm home from school. Okay. Well, maybe she's from college. Papa, I know you're gonna be upset because <laughs> I was always your little girl. What? Yeah. Wait, you, wait, wait. How is school? Well, you should know by now. <laughs> I'm not a baby. <laughs> This sounds like the intro to a porn movie. <laughs> right. This is like a step porn movie. And you hear it. <laughs> <laughs> daddy, please be strong. Yeah, yeah. Hate the word daddy. Wow. Uh, yuck, 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 yuck. Mm. I hate it. I hate it. Does Kyle ever call you daddy? You don't do that sex stuff, daddy. She stuff. calls me uh, papa. That's cute. That's endearing. That's endearing, yeah. But not daddy. You know whose wife calls him daddy. Who? 
I know. When she, when she was when she was ready to go, she goes, "Daddy, we have to go home now." <laughs> oh my I said, god! Fancy, <laughs> yeah. And he goes, "Shut your mouth, Andrew." And he didn't want me to talk about. It. I didn't want to talk about. No, it. No, you know what he does when he gets home, and I and and, and this is not even a joke. I <laughs> really believe this. Mm-hmm. You put on a black leather, <laughs> right? Velvet, velvet, like suit. a gimp, a gimp like mask, a gimp. and a, no, there, the mask has only a zipper here, right? <laughs> And you get into a wooden fucking, you know what I mean, cabinet yeah. or something, yeah. right? And you go, good night. And she closes <laughs> it. She locks it, right? And that's how you sleep. That's how you sleep. Nothing sexual about it, but that's just comfort for him. Do you do that? Yeah. How do you know? Because <laughs> that's how Pulp Fiction. I, I have a feeling. I just have a feeling that Andres is the one in the relationship that wears lingerie. <laughs> yeah. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He feels like he wants to be pretty. Yeah, what is it when the girl fucks him with a dildo? Pegging. She pegs you. Oh, yeah. Right? It's, look, personal. You don't disclose this thing. Yeah. You don't, we disclose it. You don't have to. We're yeah. doing it for you. <laughs> and then you look at the dildo and you go, made in the USA. Because <laughs> you're an American now, right? <laughs> that was part of Feels becoming good. a citizen. Yeah. You can only use dildos made in the USA. <laughs> yeah. Or China, because that's, you know. Can I, I see something? Every dildo is made in China. I also want to just ask you a personal question, if you don't mind, mm-hmm. right? He definitely minds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you don't seem like somebody that w- is an aggressive aggressor. Like in terms of like, who made the first move when it comes to boinking back in the day when you first dated her? I did. Do you believe that? No. I, yeah. th- th- I don't I guess I don't either. either. Yeah. So are you excited to go back to Oklahoma to film? I'm not going back. Wait, where are you leaving to? Florida. Why? What's in Florida? I'm doing Will Sasso's movie. Oh wow! Just a couple of scenes. Is it something he wrote? No, a company's. I don't know. Who he's it. in it. Yeah, he's in it. Oh, he's the star of it, and they asked me to be in a couple of scenes. That's awesome. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go do that. Back to the old Mad TV days, you and the Sass. Yeah, and I just worked with Ike and uh, Nick Kroll and those guys for History of the World. Kroll wasn't on bad, Mad TV, was he? No, but he was there. He was around. He's like producing it or something. History of the with Mel Brooks. Is it a remake? No, they're doing the second part. Uh-huh. <laughs> I love that, you know. <laughs> well, whole, the re- whole reason why I did it was because I thought, oh, I'm going to meet Mel Brooks, but he, I guess he's not, he doesn't come. He does everything through Zoom because of COVID and stuff. He's well, an old man. He's 100. <laughs> Isn't he the oldest man in the world? The 2,000-year-old man? The 2,000-year-old man. I, I, yeah. George, because Mel Brooks is somebody, somebody that I grew up with. Chance. He's ninety-five. Yeah, that's you're like he's insane. He's, 80. he's not eighty. That's nuts. That's yeah. insane. Because you know, it, as a kid, even I remember watching Spaceballs or <laughs> so like good. you know, Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein. Young Frank. Oh my god, <laughs> one of the greatest movies of all time in terms of comedy. That movie is so fucking funny. His bloodline is incredible. What do you mean, Albert Brooks? Oh yeah, Al- that's his son. Are you joking? No, Albert Brooks is Mel Brooks' son. What planet am I living on? <laughs> I did not know. I honestly, I did not know. Wait, wait, I, I, I don't believe you. <laughs> I, I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe you. So I'm gonna look it up myself. I, I, Selma I, I, leads. I will say, isn't isn't uh, uh, Super Dave Osborne was name his name was Bob Einstein? He was yeah. Albert Brooks' brother. Isn't that true? Isn't that crazy? Albert Brooks is Bob Einstein. AKA Super Dave Osborne, rest in peace, is his brother. He was so good. He had the best joke. Albert Brooks' dad is an al- um, <laughs> <laughs> number one. And also, the movie The Mother has nothing to do with this real model. Correct. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I, That's I right. fucked it all up. Super but. Dave Osborne, by the way, has the best joke. Go to YouTube if you want a good laugh. Super Dave Osborne told a joke to Seinfeld and Larry David on the set of um, Curb. Do Super Dave Osborne Curb joke. And I got to tell you, maybe one of the funniest jokes I've ever seen live. And you can tell that neither of them know it was coming. <laughs> That's it right there. Marty Funkhauser. Watch this, Bob. You have to watch this clip. Jerry, Marty Funkhauser. Hey, Marty. How you doing? How you doing? Good. Want to hear a joke? No, oh, he, no, he doesn't want to hear really. a joke. We have a read through. Yeah, we got Let me just get right through it. Okay. A woman's very afraid of the size of her opening. What is she afraid of? The size of her opening. So she goes to her mother, she says, what am I going to do? I'm so big down there. When I marry Harry, he's going to divorce me. Her mother says, don't worry, sweetheart. It runs in the family. Do what I did when I married your father. Go to the market, get some raw liver, put it in there. I'll never know the difference. Oh, my God. So she does. (laughs) They have eight hours of sex after their marriage. She wakes up at 10 o'clock. He's gone, but there's a note on her pillow. 
says, my darling Harriet, to think that I waited a year to consummate our love relationship makes my heart beat so loudly I'm surprised it didn't wake you up. The only reason I'm not here now, darling, is I'm at work to make enough money to buy you a house, a picket fence, we'll have dogs and children. Ah, oh, this is not so bad. Oh yeah, this is great. Will you finish the fucking joke already? <laughs> when the five o'clock dinner bell rings, I will be home like the winged gossamer of your love in your arms, your loving husband, oh, Harry. That's nice. P.S. Your c*** is in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> From what I've heard, Seinfeld didn't know the joke was coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just rewind. Well, just I, I want to see his response. Oh, just a second back when he says yeah, it. Yeah, watch, yeah. watch Seinfeld's face. Yeah, I want to see this. <laughs> Dinner bell rings. I will be home like the winged gossamer of your love in your arms, your loving husband oh, Harry. That's nice. P.S. Your c is in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you told the joke. Let's go. How good is that? It mean, surprised me. Ladies and gentlemen, please hold. He really in... thought he was funny. I think at first. Rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking Bob Einstein. He died. <laughs> yeah, Super Dave passed away. How? I don't remember. I remember it was. It was, it was only like a year or two ago, right? Wow, he died. Yeah, Super Dave. Click on Super Dave. Uh, George, please. Yeah. yeah, I, I, I don't remember how he passed away. And he wasn't an old. She, he, he was a young man. Um. He was 76. Yeah. It was quite, it's still young, relatively, I guess. Yeah. Oh, cancer. Yeah. Fuck. Cancer gets you. It gets you. My buddy, my buddy's going to see his uh, family member that's got cancer today. And it's, uh, that's it. I feel comedy coming. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a joke coming. <laughs> the joke is. No. So whose friends has cancer? What? No, my buddy's uncle. And he's going to see him today. I felt terrible for him because they got like, you know. They get the end diagnosis. If, if, <laughs> if, I, if I told you, yeah, it made me think, genuinely. Mm. If a doctor says, Bobby, you, you got four months to live, I, I, and, I'm not, and, and, and there, it, this is it, it. Mm. What are you doing for four months? Are you going to quit the podcast? Oh, yeah. You'd quit? <laughs> Fuck yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> no, there's just too much to do. I, I, there's just too much to do. But we could, we, could, we, could, we could chronicle your cancer and your death. I got, the, before that, I have to f get this golden clock in Stardew Valley. <laughs> <laughs> right? So that's the first thing. That, literally the first thing is I got to get, because I'm at $4 million now, right? And it costs $10 million. Because I already bought the obelisks and I bought the fucking, um, the, the little staff that gets you ho returns home, right? So I'm like, I'm, I'm like a week away from getting the fucking golden clock. So that's the first thing I did. You're right there. I'm right there, right? <laughs> would you would you quit Tiger Tiger Belly? Or oh that? yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're all gone. There's too much to do, man. Okay. The second thing is is that I would call Bethesda. That's the golden clock. Maryland. Yeah. Bethesda. Yeah, I think they are in Maryland, but there is a city called Maryland. But Bethesda Softworks, and I go, can I get an early audition of Starfield? Their new game that's coming out in November. An early edition, yeah. Like, because I'm sure they're working out the kinks, but I got kinks with all the kinks. I don't care because I'm dying in four months. I gotta play it. I've is, been waiting 15 yeah. years for this fucking game. Is kinks a racial epithet? What? <laughs> I don't know. They used to call that to me in high school, but I was uh, I always waved when they called me that. What's up, you fucking kink? Yeah, I'd be like, what's up? Hey. Yeah, yeah. So you want that. So you want the golden clock. Well, so what else would I want? You want to get Stardew Valley, Bethesda, asked if they can give you the early release. What right. else are you going to do? Four months, man. And then the real stuff, I would do that, but I, and I'm being real, but also I would make some amends. <laughs> Not all. Right. <laughs> and then I would also do this. There's a guy that you can hire to speak on your behalf at your funeral. Mm -hmm. So there's a guy that you can hire. So he, this guy you hire, and he'll say stuff like, uh, yeah, so Ted died but he wants your wife amanda he been he's been seeing somebody else for the last 10 years <laughs> mm -hmm. or, he, or this guy will say stuff like yeah frank he was gay right right he didn't want to come out when i was alive what's this man called what i don't know his, what his name is <laughs> the truth spitter I, I i don't know but i would hire him to say certain things to, to, certain to people. people yeah yeah yeah. while you're alive or wait no what i'm dead the moment you die. yeah right. so we have to i have to get together with that guy and go all right so i want you to say this to kevin right you have to say this to kevin <laughs> uh-huh and but kevin won't go to your funeral but i'm going to make sure he goes i like that yeah yeah uh, you have to say this to dr ken <laughs> <laughs> you have to say this to andrew yeah right well, to me yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's just certain things that I, he needs to say to the people I, that i can't say you know what i mean what, while i'm alive what is it for me that i love you is that what you can't say to me um it was okay <laughs> <laughs> 
I, you know, I would say, I wouldn't hire them to do that. No, I would say all the things that I was going to say to you, I would say to your face. Yeah, I would right? hope so. There would be some letters, right? <clears throat> and then there would some, be some stuff that I would want to say after I'm dead. And then... Um, are you taking any trips? Four months, you're about to die. You're not going to go where, on vacation. Where, where am I going to go? I'm going to be dead there too. I mean, I'm dead. I'm dying. I know, but I'm jumping on a private jet. To go I'm, where? All the places I haven't been. Yeah, but for me, I've never been everywhere, but I've been to every environment. I would jump on a private jet, spend 24 hours in a bunch of different places and just keep jetting around. I would waste all my money on private but jets. But what I'm saying is, what's the difference between Tulum and Hawaii? If they're all tropical, so why would you want... I haven't been to Tulum, but I've been to Hawaii. Who gives a fuck, right? I think Tulum and Hawaii are completely different places. <laughs> I know, but in terms of... Tr in terms of... In, in the temperature, climate. Temperature? Climate. Okay, there's way more than just temperature. All right, so there's palm trees in Hawaii and Tulum. What else is different? Except for Mexicans. Culture, <laughs> food... What do you mean? But like the hotel room is what Bobby's saying. Like right. what's yeah, the yeah, hotel yeah. room? Yeah, the like? four seasons is the four seasons everywhere. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's insane. Like, yeah. Right. So I've been to um cold places. Like I've never been to Antarctica, but like why would I want to go there? Why not? I've been to Canada. Same, while it was snow. Same place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the feeling is it's the a same. little bit more south. A little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so you're not taking trips. Right, not gonna do trips. What else? Are you gonna go try anything? Like are you gonna jump out of an airplane or bungee jump or do something you've never done before? No, because I'm going to be in heaven. I'm going to do that there. They don't have bungee jumping anymore in heaven after the accident. <laughs> oh, really? They had to stop doing it. You would think there would be. Like, you, you have a little fucking bungee attached to a cloud. And one guy fucks up, it ruins it for everybody. Ah. Uh, he went, we went all the way down to hell. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> right, it snapped. Pull went... me back up! <laughs> I just yeah, couldn't. Yeah. yeah, so then, um, what else would I do? Um, a lot of, like, real amends. Like, I'm sorry that I did that. But what about for you? What about what? Don't you, you want to feel some gratification for? Would you use again? You'd probably relapse. For no, sure. I wouldn't. <laughs> you wouldn't? No, I want to see God sober. No, I know. I I, I don't be uh, dying. Uh, sorry, God. Hold on. I'm I, I, I'm a little bit. I'm going to the heroin detox. <laughs> Do you think it, when you die of heroin, you're high when you get to heaven or hell? I think you're groggy a little bit up there. So how many days did it take to get back to normal? Probably a week. Yeah, you just on a cloud. <laughs> Just twitching yeah, and yeah, sweating, twitching, going through fucking withdrawals, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's and, the, and the worst. Would be if you, if you're going through withdrawals and then you're in a pit of fire in hell, and you never get away from the withdrawals. That's what hell is. Wow, you withdraw that would be for the rest terrible. of time. That'd be fucking. What would you do? I told you partially. I would get on a private jet and I would literally tour with my family and friends all over the world and just spend like a day in a bunch of crazy places. Spend money. Eat. Uh, that means he has money. <laughs> Eat as much food. <laughs> well, I'd spend every dime I have. Right. I had too. zero intention on keeping any of my money if I knew I was going to die. Oh, so you wouldn't leave for, some for your sister? For who? Your sister! Get a fucking job! <laughs> your family! Get a fucking job! Yeah, yeah, no. I would leave some for my brother. And... Zero. Not one fucking dime will be left when I die. <laughs> Why? I can't have a little? No, nothing. I'm spending literally all of it. In fact, I'm going to have an accountant budget out what I could spend, <laughs> where I could eat fancy restaurants, private chefs. I, I would spend every dime I've ever fucking worked hard to make and save. I'd take it all out of everything that I've ever invested in and I would throw would it be, would, I would throw it away so fucking fast, but I wouldn't buy things. I would do it by experiences. I'm buying private jets all over the world to exotic places to eat amazing meals and and bone my wo bone my woman on the beach. <laughs> And get a ticket for it. Yeah. Go to prison for it. And then I would, after I tour, tour around the world for one month, jet, jet, jet setting, then I would spend the next month um, seeing family and extended members of friends and saying my goodbye. And I would say, because I don't want this close to the end. I want to do it now and get it over with. And then yeah. the last two months, I would try to physically set Hollywood on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. would literally go to every I would every studio. I'll help you do that. And I would every studio poof, comically. I would set yeah. up. Uh, I would try to blow up every studio. You know what I would do the day after you your funeral? <laughs> this would be devastating. So I'm at your funeral, right? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And people are grieving. Yeah, they're grieving. I, I'll say hi. I'll hug your parents. Mm -hmm. Right, your sister. I'll hug a little extra. <laughs> no. Yeah, just a little extra because no. she's grieving. No. Oh. All right. So, <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. It's okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hold on. No. Right. So then, um, <laughs> and the next day I would come to the studio and continue bad friends with Anthony Jeselnik. <laughs> <laughs> would you be mad? No. You would be in heaven. The you money would... would still go to my account. <laughs> would it really? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I've set it up that way. 
<laughs> oh, right, right. Yeah. No, I wouldn't would be you mad. Got, honestly, would you guys, please, if he died and Doc still wanted to do it and Jules and everyone wanted to do it and we just needed a second guy, it would not be the same without you, okay? But <laughs> would you, if I, would you continue it? Be honest. I would hope you would. Absolutely. Just because I'm we dead. We worked really hard on the name and the brand. Right. Who's we? Me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so mm. the brand, baby. So what would you do, man? I would definitely keep doing it. Yeah. How about you, George? No way. No way. It wouldn't be the same. You got to start something different. God bless you. Oh, me. we would change the name a little bit. Stop it. George, good friends. George Kimmel. <laughs> what? You're the fucking man. I love you to death. You see that? I was giving you guys an out. I said, yeah, you should continue doing it. But George, what he said, he goes, we should change the name and start a new show. What would you do the day after my funeral? I'd get Ken Jong in here to fucking... <laughs> I just I know so many more Koreans now. I know you do. So Stephen Young could pop right by. Yeah, you know who would really fit in David Cho. Yeah, I would fucking love to. Do uh, that, that would yeah. be a, a banger. No, but the, the, let's be honest. You want the truth? Yeah. Nobody in me, my me comedy too. career too. have I ever had what I have with you. <laughs> yeah, me too. Nobody. Me too. No, no, I'm serious. I'm being real. There's nobody I've meshed with as more as fun as we do comedically than any comic I've ever worked with. So me, no, me too. it would never be the same. And that being said, we want to take two seconds right now to say thank you to the fans. It means a lot to us that you guys watch the show. We continue doing the show with or without Little Black Magic and Rudy. They'll both be back when they can. We also want to remind you, we are doing more fan interactions. We're going to be setting up some stuff. And we're not going to announce the date, but we are going to be doing a Bad Friends Live soon. Mm. Live stream. We're doing a Bad Friends live stream soon. So you can you can see that. We've got a ton of special surprises. That 2023, you guys are we also want to do way more live dates yes. when me and Andrew go on the road. Next year, we want to do we want to do a bunch of stuff together to come see We're you guys. We're also going to sometimes now have some guests on. We're going to start having guests on the show as well. Yeah. Yes. So if you big guys ones. have suggestions, we'll have big ones. name down below who you guys think you'd want on this show. So comment who you guys think would you'd want on the show. Um, and uh, we'll... Uh, We'll start. We'll start having some fun guests on the show because we think it'd be nice to mix it up a little bit. And then um, after that, I want Andres to to close out the show and uh, and take us home, fans. Thank you for being a bad friend. 